This is with a basically 100 millisecond wide 13 kV. Again, all these waveforms have been applied to the Fluke 101. It functioned just fine after. But here's the problem. If I leave the leads off, you can see it's reading uh, 500K. Put a 10 meg across it. That's what we read. You know, 100K, it'll read it just fine. 1 meg, can't do it. These three devices up here are what failed. I'd previously tested an 87V on this transient generator to see if this was robust as a Fluke 101. And unfortunately that meter was damaged. So you had a lot of people commenting about how the 87V wasn't damaged until it was hit with the 13,000 volt transient. Which, uh, it is true, but it also had never been tested to anything below 13,000 volts. As I continued to increase the power of the output, I had to redesign and reconstruct this generator. And I thought if I ever re-ran these tests, um, we would build a better generator that we could actually program the output waveform. And this generator is the result of that effort. And it allows me to reproduce these tests with basically a push of a button. My plan now is to use the new generator to test an 87V and try to determine exactly where this meter will fail. I just finished testing the 87V. It appears to be functional after the 1 kV hit. So we'll go ahead and increase this to 1.5 kV. Okay, that's it for the 1.5 k. We'll go ahead and functional test it. Unbelievable. 1.5 kV. So here's with a dead short. You can see it's reading uh, 261 ohms, open 9.4k ohms. Jeez, a frickin' Pete. Okay, looking at it in the uh, millivolt DC range here, it's now reading about 200 microvolts lower than what it did originally. So I suspect there's some damage in that uh, mode as well. So, millivolts ohms, capacitance, and diode check are all damaged on this meter. Uh, DC volts and AC volts appear to be fine. We'll use the Bryman here to try to troubleshoot the 87V. Hopefully here it's just a, a, a diode. Yeah. Ooh. 50 ohm. 100 ohm. Be a hundred nanofarad. Try dial check. Yep, looks good. Here we're supplying one millivolt. But uh, yeah, I didn't again think it would ever fail at one and a half kV, but that seems to be the case. Unreal, just unreal. Hello again and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at this brand new Fluke 87V. This meter was purchased directly from Fluke. It was manufactured in December of 2017. So this is right off of the production line. I'm planning on repeating all the same tests that I would normally run a meter through. One of the things I was interested in doing is repeating my life cycle testing that I had done on this Fluke 17B+. Again, we ran this meter through 50,000 full cycles. So that's one cycle 50,000 times. And the switch on this thing looks very good. By far, this is the best meter that I've looked at out of the ones I've tested. And the only meters that have come close to this are the two Bryman meters that I tested. Again, this particular one also survived 50,000 cycles. And indeed, it works just fine. And the whole reason that we're going to run this test is I had transient tested uh, Fluke 87V early on. And it failed at a level that this Fluke 101 had actually passed at. So this exact meter has been tested at 13,000 volts with a 100 microsecond full width half height. And there was a forum member who had access to an IEC combo generator that repeated those tests at 12,000 volts. And sure enough, the meter that he had purchased also passed. 
So I thought what I would do is just see if a brand new one would survive any better than the previous ones I had looked at. So it doesn't look like it comes with a manual. My guess is this is probably the calibration information. The meter itself looks like it comes with batteries. I would assume that this is version 303. Yep. So it's got the latest firmware that I'm aware of. And looks like it comes with the standard leads. The thermocouple looks like it's changed a little bit. So this is an old style fluke. Let's see they're both marked fluke. Of course this one has the two safety sheaths on it. Also comes with a couple of screw on alligator clips. Looks pretty nice. Oh, this is nice. It also comes with a couple of plugs. These can be inserted into the jacks. These came off of one of the sun meters that I damaged early on. At least it powers up. Well, I don't know if this is going to show up in the camera. Let me just change the angle of our camera. And let me just show you the first problem. We didn't get very far in our testing, but if you look at the shade of this stand, this is actually quite a bit darker than what the boot is. Try it in a different light. Boy, I can tell you from my angle, this just sticks out like a sore thumb. So this is an older fluke. And, wow, when I look at this, this matches. You know what it looks like? This case is a little lighter. The two stands appear to be the same color. So it looks like who's ever doing their rubber molding is actually getting the color wrong. Wow. I'll tell you another thing. This has a lot of swirling in it. The texture on this case is very uniform. You can see that maybe in the light here, how it's kind of swirling. This is just a really bad finish. Wow, and it's all the way up the side. Same thing over here. Look at this. See up in here? And all along this side, see how speckled this is? Well, this is just really bad. Even up at the top, see the same thing. Again, this is a quite a bit older meter, but you can see how uniform the finish is. Well, that's not impressive. You know, another thing, looking at the two meters, Notice that the shade of white that they're using for the marking is a lot lighter. Let me try to get them in the same light. And just look at the difference between the two. I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera, but I can tell you that the lettering on the new meter is quite a bit lighter. Let's have a look at the two LCDs. So the new meter definitely has better contrast than the original one. Looking at the background on the original one, it almost looks speckled. The new one's a lot smoother. Alright, I thought I'd show you what they look like in direct sunlight.
The Brahmin has a screen protector from Belkin that I'd made for it. I do like the lettering on the older 189. See how thick this is? You can see how much larger the switches are versus the 87. So that of course they can use larger fonts. It's just a lot easier to read. By far this is my favorite fluke that I've ever looked at. Unfortunately they don't sell it anymore. If I had to buy a brand new fluke it'd be the 289. All right, so you can see we're back out in our motorcycle trailer here. I figure as long as we're outside, let's just try a quick little chemical test. Again, this is methanol with the top end oiler. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the screen here. And a little bit around the lettering. See if this attacks this at all. So that looks really good. Okay, this is going to be some VP fuel. This is C16. It's a leaded racing gasoline. BP. All right, let's have a look. Let's see if that did anything to it. It looks real good. Okay, I don't see any problems with that at all. I thought as long as we have the meters in the trailer, let's just try looking at the backlight real quick. This is the Bryman 17B Plus. That's the highest level it has. This is the 869. This is the older 87V. This is the newer one. Let's just try turning that up a bit. That's on the low and that's on the high setting. That's on the low. That's on the low. You can see the new 87B is quite a bit brighter. See how that compares with the Bryman. Again, the new 87B on the right and the older 869S on the left. And again, this is the older 87B. And this is the Fluke 189. And again, the Fluke 17B+. Plus. So the new 87V is definitely a little brighter than the original one. You know, this switch again has been cycled 50,000 times. If I grab hold of the plastic tight, you know how smooth that is? Now you may think that that's because this switch is wore in. This is looking at the 189 that my friend gave me. 
again the switch is just very smooth I can't tell much of a difference between this 189 and this 17B plus same thing with the 115 it's just very smooth the 101 is like butter Of course, this meter doesn't have near the contact, so you'd expect the drag to be less. I assume it's the same with the 107. Yeah, again, very smooth. Listen to how this thing grinds. Compare that with our old one. This has actually got a tighter detent spring too. It just snaps right into place. This one, kind of sluggish. If I had a way to measure the torque on this, I'd do it. Because there's definitely a difference between the two of these. For me personally, I kind of like the tighter detent spring. I like that with the Bryman. Of course, these BMA 69 S's are very sharp. So looking at the box, you can see the country of origin, United States, and we can see made in the United States with imported parts. I really am not sure what is required to have something marked made in the United States anymore. Let's just have a look at how the meter is marked on the cover. So here we can see it says assembled in the United States. The older fluke says made in USA. Let's go ahead and pop the cover of the two meters. Alright, so this is the older one. And we can see that this is made in the USA. And the newer meter is not marked. You can also see that they've changed the certification slightly. Again, this is a older meter. Well, again, looking inside of the boot. There you go. Now you can see the difference. This is what the outside of it looks like as well. See, it just has these blemishes. I bet you they changed suppliers for this boot. Then again, it just could be that the supplier screwed up some cases and nobody in quality control caught it. Well, I'm going to say we're not off to a real good start. All right, the next thing I'd like to do is just a basic functional test of the meter. Again, I'll be using our test box for this. Alright, so we can start out. This will be a two and a half volt signal and you can see it's at 60 Hertz so this is AC coupled let's try it with a DC coupled output no problems at all this is at 30 Hertz 15 Hertz 120 Hertz 3.2 kilohertz it's kinda of bizarre so if I hit frequency it switches it to manual range and you have to go back to auto range manually anyway so 68 volts that's about right let's just try it in DC mode so this should be roughly 60 volts that looks fine unfortunately this meter doesn't have AC plus DC personally for the $400 that you're gonna pay for a meter like this I would expect it to have some basic features like that this will be 5 volts that looks fine this should be 0 that looks fine This should be 2.5 that looks good it doesn't have an AC millivolt scale, you have to switch it back over to volt. So this will be 118 millivolts. That's definitely okay. This should be roughly 20 millivolts. That seems fine. Let's just try it in temperature. Again, this should be roughly 500 degrees Celsius. <laughs> so the meter can't read up this high. Let's just see how high it'll read. 
Uh, it's like right at the edge. It's like about 470 degrees Celsius. So again, this should be roughly room temp. Let's have a look at the original 87V. Looks like about 492 degrees is where it overranges. And let's switch it back over to our new one. It's definitely reading an open there. And if I start to back this down just a little bit, it almost looks like they've moved where they overrange at. See, I can't get this thing to display more than 172 or so degrees. Or if we look at the original one. Yeah, I wonder why they would change the cutoff for it again. Huh. Look at this. I mean, it's definitely overranging. Just slowly bringing it down and sure enough. It's like 472. All right, let's try resistance. This is with a short. We'll go ahead and clear that out. This will be a 0 0.1 ohm, 1% part. I don't think there's a way to get a higher res. Nope. Let's just try it with a 0.5 ohm. Looks like 0.6. And this is with a 1 ohm 1% 1 part. Looks like 1.1. 1 .1. This will be a 50 ohm 0.01% part. This is with a 100 ohm 0.01%. This is with a 1K 0.1%. This is with a 10K 1%. Put it into high res mode. Looks pretty good. This is a 100k 0.1 percent. This is a 1 meg 1 percent. This is a 10 meg 0.1 percent. Let's just try it at 40 meg. Not read that directly. I believe the 189 could actually do this. Let's just have a look. Yep, 39.4. Let's just try it with the Ryman BM869S. And you can see no problems at all. Let's see, just bringing your hands near it. It definitely changes the reading. That's fairly normal. Let's switch it to Nano Siemens. And again, this will be our 40 meg, so this should read 25 Nano Siemens. Look at that. So it looks like it cannot read down that low. So there's a dead spot with this meter. And that's kind of interesting. So if you go to Auto Range, you cannot read a 40 mega ohm resistor. And if you go to Nano Siemens, you still can't read it. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Let's try it with 100 meg. So this should read 10, and that's correct. So you get up over 40 meg, you can read it. That's pretty bad. Let's just try it with a 1 giga ohm. And this should be 1 Nano Siemens. And that's just fine. I noticed one thing. You have to change this thing out of high resolution mode. You can see if you're in high res, it just overranges. So if I select manual range, and we go to nano Siemens, you can see it's still in overrange. If I take it back out, you can see 25 nano Siemens. Back to high res, overranges. over ranges take it back out of high res again 40 meg so I'm not a real big fan of that higher resolution mode 
I guess it's just something that you have to be aware of that it's not going to work in every single function and and if it's overranging it's very possible it's because you have that mode enabled so let's just try the 40 meg in nano siemens on the original 189 there you go 25.22 and this is with our 100 meg so reads 10 and let's just try it with our one gig and it should read one looks fine again this should read 25 you can see no problems at all and again this is our 100 meg and our one gig looks fine again we'll clear it out and this will be 150 picofarads that looks fine. Let's see if it has a higher res. It does not. This will be one nanofarad. Looks fine. This is a 0.1 microfarad. And that looks fine. This is a one microfarad. This will be 10. And this will be a 100 microfarad. Those all look good. Try it in diode check mode. So again, this will be a open. There's a short. Don't care for the beeping, but so there's a single diode, and here's two. This will be with our small white LED. You can see it lights that up, no problem. It should be roughly two and a half volts drop. So it has to be in low res mode to be able to read this diode. This will be with 100 microamps applied. It looks fine. This will be 10 microamps. Let's just try it in the microamp range. Again, this will be 100 microamps. It's a shame it switches to AC. Typically, when I'm working with electronics, I'd rather have the meter default to DC current, or at least give me a different switch for it. All right, so there's 100 microamps. Here's 10, 1, and 100 nanoamps. Let's try it in high res mode. Well, that's kind of bizarre. So, in high res mode, it cannot display this 100 nanoamps. What's up with that? Let's take it back out of high res mode. There you go 0.2 microamps. Back to high res mode. And there you go, microamp DC it reads nothing. Let's just try that with the original Fluke 87. And we'll switch it to DC. And you can see it's reading 0.1, that's correct. Let's change to the high resolution mode. And again, negative 0 0.05. <laughs> it's not even close. Alright, let's just try that with the Fluke 189. Again, this will be one microamp, and this is 100 nanoamps. It's nice that this meter also has separate functions for the DC and the AC currents. You know, again, this one being shared, I guess I don't mind that, but the fact that it comes up in AC is kind of bothersome. At least with the Bryman, you know, when they share these functions, this stores the last value that you use. So if you put this thing into current mode and you select DC and you power it off, it's going to come up in DC the next time. So here you can see it's in DC mode. This is DC plus AC. Here's our AC plus DC with our AC in the upper right. And here's just our AC current and the frequency in the upper right. So if I turn this meter off, turn it back on that's the mode that this is going to come up in so personally this is the way I would like the meters to work this is the meter that went through the 50,000 life cycle test and then later on I transient tested it damaged it repaired it and then I attempted to harden the meter as you can see all four meters are basically reading the same value this is with one volt applied 
and this is with one millivolt applied. Let's just switch all the meters to their DC modes and again it looks like they all read basically the same value. Again the Bryman has a high res mode similar to the Flukes. You can see we can gain a digit. These are already in their high res mode. And it looks like the 869S and the 189 are fairly close. Alright, well I think that's going to be it for part one. And of course we have a lot of testing to go with this meter. Again, I plan to run this over temperature and I also want to do the switch life cycle testing with it. And that's beyond our transient testing. So I'm going to leave you with this. Can you tell which meter is the new one and the old one based on the contrast of that lettering? This is the old one. Look at the yellow, how much brighter it is. Alright, so stay tuned for part two. Later.